Hello, this is Morgana Ray. Welcome to Rich Witch Wednesday. I am your host and head witch. And I, let's see, for those of you who don't know who I am, I have been a mentor, coach, and best selling author for over 25 years. These days, my focus is cultivating and supporting world changing women leaders. And every Wednesday morning, now that we are quarantined here together. I am hosting these weekly live live streams on Facebook. Uh, and the technology is getting more and more confusing for me every week. So uh, my goodness. Um, yes. So I during the course of this, just type in your comments, type in your questions. And I have a question that came in before that I'm going to focus on. And we'll see if it fills up our time together because it's kind of a big question. Hello, Elizabeth from Spain. I see you here. So a question came in from a new coach who is establishing her coaching business, wanting to know how to get started. Great Great question. And hello, Zach. I'm just seeing people join us now. So the question is, how do I get started establishing my coaching business? And everything that I share with you can totally be adjusted to other service industries because uh, there's so much overlap. So getting started, by the way, that is always the hardest part, breaking free of gravity, hugest that then that's the hardest part. Just know that it's going to take some time and you're going to be making some adjustments and then it gets easier and easier and you build up more and more speed and then other challenges arise along the way. So getting started, everybody in the coaching world or other, you know, consulting, mentoring, all that will tell you to get a niche. That is important from a marketing perspective. But before I get into that, I really, really want to make a distinction here about what coaching is and how it gets, the term gets misused and how the better you are as a coach, the more difficult it is to market you. So let's separate your ability to market and get clients from your ability to deliver value because they are very different skill sets. And that's going to be important later because that's where the pain in the marketing shows up. So a real coach and there, I would say a minority of the people who call themselves a coach are real coaches. A real coach actually has skills that don't specialize. A real coach does not tell you what to do and doesn't take away your learning from you by giving you like just orders, right? And then blames you for not doing them. And I and I have to put that out there because that is a huge pet peeve of mine that I think really damages clients and the industry as a whole, is we want to get really clear about what coaching as a profession is. Uh, according to the International Coaches Federation, I'm not going to, I haven't memorized it verbatim, but it's along the lines of it's a conversation that moves the client forward. And some of the fundamental core beliefs in the coaching world is that the client really has the answers, that the client, you, the client, know yourself and you know your business better than anybody else. Now, there is a gap when you're starting a business that you may not actually know a lot about business or your business yet, but you know you. And you know what is in integrity for you better than anybody else. And the same is true for your clients. So when coaches start telling clients to do stuff that doesn't feel right, the coach is not coaching. 
a real coach finds actions and goals and dreams that feel right to the client that the client can and will take action on. And when the client gets stuck, the coach has the skills to find out what is causing the stuckness. And maybe you need to remove a block with the client's consent and cooperation and desire. Or maybe you need to adjust the goal a little bit to something that is more doable right now. So that's what a coach does. And the coach doesn't need to know really what your business is or what your relationship is or what, you know, just a lot of, a, a lot of areas of specialty. The coach really doesn't need to be as much of an expert on anything in your life as you are. That is pure coaching. The coach just has the skills to help you get your answers and get and you get your results. So that is the foundation of coaching. And that's really hard to market because there's no there there. You know, it's just very, very vague, really bad marketing be all you can be, you know, hold your greatness. And that's what we all sounded like 30 years ago. And maybe that worked at that time because there was so little competition. But that really is a hard sell now unless you already are really well known and established. And that's where the difference between coaching and marketing comes up. For marketing, people need to have a specific pain and desire a specific result and not getting that result is more painful than giving you money. And that's how commerce happens. Whether you're selling a hamburger or you're selling a house or you're selling a cure to a pandemic, you, whatever you're selling, the cost of an action has to be more painful than the cost of action. So, that's where niches specialization comes up. And again, this has to be very personal to you. Uh, any niche, any specialty has to be something you love so that you want to be doing it. Otherwise, you will burn out. And it has to serve people that you want to serve. And this is, and it has to be something you're really good at meaning you can help people get results in that area of life. The tricky thing is what we're really good at may not be what we enjoy or even the people we enjoy working with, uh, and that can lead to burnout. So I always have three criteria in any business decision I make. It has to be fun, it has to help people, and it has to make money. I'm going to say that again. It has to be fun for me. It has to help other people and it has to make money because also being fun and helping people is not sustainable if, if it's not also profitable because then it's a hobby and not a business. So this may be stuff you have already thought about or not. I'm going to put in something really, really important here, especially for anybody starting out trying to figure out their specialization. Don't expect specialization to feel good. It is like having two hands and 10 fingers and you're going to pretend that you really only have the tip of your pinky and you're going to pretend all this other talent and all this other interest doesn't exist for marketing purposes. I pretend to be a money coach. Why? Because my clients get really dramatic money results and that's good for marketing. Oh, hint, anything that you can uh, quantify, anything you can give numbers to, numbers are really good for marketing because we like measurements. It's like blah, 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 $10,000, blah, 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 blah. That's what people hear. So I have the money niche. But I could have been a brand and marketing coach. I could have been a love coach. I could certainly be a self-confidence coach. I could, you know, because I do all these things with my clients, everyday life balance, what have you, magic, intuition, all of it. I've been doing all of that for years and years and years and years. But I pretend to be a money coach because it helps my people find me. 
So that's the bad news, is you are going to pretend to be the tiniest fraction of what you actually are. But the good news is, is whether you pretend to be a money coach or a self-esteem coach, by the way, every coach is a self-esteem coach, whether we call ourselves that or not, because all coaching is about your relationship with self and life. I just call it money because it's money is connected with all those areas. And it, but I digress. I digress a lot. You will have noticed that. Think of your niche as just a pain door. It's not all you do. It's what you focus on for marketing. But the real root cause of anything you address, whether it is weight loss, whether it is writer's block, whether it is midlife crisis, whether it is building a business or finding your soulmate, I just pick anything. It's like um, a coach friend of mine described it as, imagine a rotunda, a building with a round building with doors on every angle and they all lead into the same room. So money, the reason I've been able to have this niche for, you know, for decades is because as soon as people come in, we work on the really interesting stuff, the real stuff behind the money, the love issues, the worthiness issues, the relationship with life and our, our, our need for security issues, all of it, our spirituality, our life purpose, all of it is behind the money door. And I'm telling you that to take some of the pressure off, that it will never be everything you do. You get to be the full spectrum of the coach you are, but pick a door. Pick a door that you have exquisite integrity and credibility. By the way, a lot of people go into like the money niche thinking it's the easiest to make money with, I would say it is not because who do you attract? You attract people who don't think that they have money. <laughs> uh, if you're a sociopath who doesn't care about delivering results, that's not an issue for you. I'm not speaking to you. Pick the niche, the specialty that lights you up that you are passionate about and communicate in the language of your ideal client. And the only way to find that out, by the way, I'm trying to cram in like three to six months of coaching into a 20 minute little episode of Morgana, Rich Witch, what are, what are we calling this? Rich Witch Wednesday, right. So I apologize if you feel like a French goose being overfed in the moment, I am. I am overfeeding you in the moment. So the points I wanted to make were, uh, let's see, finding a niche or specialty does not feel good in it for almost all of us <laughs> because it's not all of who we are or what we offer. And the more we offer, the better we are. The more mastery we have, the harder it is to market. The less you have to offer, if your entire contribution to the planet is you know how to help people get opt-ins to their email list, that is easy peasy to market because it's so clear, right? But if you can help people with so much more than that, then it just gets harder and harder to articulate. Just know that and give yourself a break. That is how it is. That's the first piece. The second piece is that your niche is not all of what you offer and it's just the pain door. And when pe once people enter, they get to get so much more than just what you promised, but make sure Make sure you can deliver on whatever you promise in multiples, more than they expected. Um, okay, third one, this is really, really important. And this is something you will hear almost nowhere. And I, I had been thinking this for years. And then my friend Tad Hargrave of uh, Marketing for Hippies, I think, uh, Dot com or something very similar to that. You can just look him up. I, he's so good at this. He art, I love the way he articulated it. You date your niche. The niche you pick today does not have to be a niche for life. My first niche in 1994, when 
back, back before nobody had heard of coaching or very few, when it was really small, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, my niche was entertainment industry. I coached movie stars and producers and writers and line producers and composers and all sorts of people that do stuff in the industry that you didn't even know about. Uh, so I, I ended up with a bunch of truly, you know, big time award-winning actors, movie stars, producers, directors, but they didn't start there. So that's where I began and that evolved. And then I mentored, I've mentored so many coaches, beginner coaches who are now very successful, iconic, six, seven, even eight figure coaches. So I know what I'm talking about. I probably should have said that at the beginning when I'm talking about mentoring coaches. And then I moved from that to where I'm working now with these like brilliant, iconoclastic, uh, world-changing CEOs and artists and inventors, you know, what I call my world-changing women leaders. So it's, and, and men too, always men. Uh, but that isn't who I market to. By the way, you will always get more than just what you market. Um, but you get to date your niche. In fact, you might want to have one or two or three related and then see which sticks. Uh, I The way I ended up with my money niche was by accident. It wasn't, it wasn't my intention. It's like the greatest cosmic joke. I had my own transformation with my relationship with money because I tried every other program out there and I had my vision board and I took all the marketing and sales classes and I would, and people were like doing all sorts of weird, freaky, you know, woo woo spiritual stuff on me and nothing was working. Nothing was working. Until one day my coach said, if your money was a person, who would your money be? And I saw how monstrous and terrifying and, and repulsive and scary my, my, my money person was. And it changed my life immediately. And I had four new clients the next day paying me double what I'd ever charged before. And I've made millions of dollars since then. So that's what got me on this trajectory. But that wasn't my niche even then. I was invited by the relationship coaching school that I studied at amidst my 10 different certifications and trainings. Uh, and I wrote an article about how I used relationship coaching on the idea of money as a person. And my coaching school published it to its audience and the reaction, the response was so overwhelming. It was like a tsunami of enthusiasm that swept me away. And I felt like the universe picked me up by the scruff of my neck and said, this is what we're doing. And I said, okay. And I've been doing it ever since. And that was the beginning of 2003. So just the money stuff. So pay attention to signs. Even then I was, Still, you know, he hemming and hawing. And then I took a class with Joel Roberts, the best marketing coach in the world, bar none, his language of influence class, whatever he calls it now. And I did a, a live hot seat with him where I was pretending to be on his top rated first market Los Angeles radio show from back when he was, you know, a, a top whatever they call radio hosts now. Uh, and I tried doing, you know, my charmed life coaching, which is the name of my business. And I tried doing relationship with money and relationship with money had such easy instant liftoff that it was just easier to market. So how do you get started? Back to how do you get started? Take a lot of pressure off of yourself. Get, I'm going to give you some real perspective. Um, you, you may or may not know what your niche is starting out. So don't worry about getting it right or wrong. Right now you're kind of throwing spaghetti. I discovered by accident, I've been sending out my newsletter for six months, starting uh, November of 
2002 and then somewhere around April of 2003, I wrote about relationship with money and my list told me that's what it wanted out of all of the different topics that I was writing each, each issue of my electronic newsletter. Uh, so don't worry about getting it right. Just get started and make adjustments. Listen to what your clients like the most or the clients you want to have if you don't have any. Listen to what their words are. Ask. I used to have a pop-up on my website that would say, what is your number one burning question about becoming a money magnet? And I received thousands of responses. And to this day, I will go shopping through these responses to write a new blog post or create a new product because it lets me know what my people want to know. Um, for getting started, uh, have an email list have a way for people to join your email list so that you can develop relationship over time. Don't expect people to sign up for you right away. Let them get to know you and build a relationship first. Learn how to have effective enrollment conversations. I have plenty of friends who teach that all the time. And, uh, and I think I actually point to some of them under free resources on my website at MorganaRay.com. So you can find links to Joel Roberts. You can find links to um, a lot of coaches who really specialize exclusively on newbies, on people who are just starting out and have lots of templates. I like to work um, more one-on-one, -on -one, more individually. I like to kind of sculpt marketing messages so I tend to work at a much higher level, which has a higher investment level, which may not be appropriate for some people starting out. My sweet spot, honestly, is people who are already in business, already know their business, and then getting them to the multiple, you know, six and seven figures really quickly. Oh, I was going to say something about perspective. Um, many, many years ago, uh, I was having a conversation with, um, a guy who was head of sales for a giant telecommunication company for, in, he was head of sales for entire continents. And he told me something really interesting that I think applies to you, wherever you are right now, which is, he said it took a year for him to learn exactly what he was selling. And it took him a year after that to find out exactly who he was selling to. And then the third year was learning how to sell what he sold to the people he was selling to. That is a three year journey. That is normal. So coaching can help you compact, shorten that learning curve. But I want you to know that a learning curve is normal. And what you are doing right now is you are learning what your business is and who you serve, and it is in flux. And you get to reinvent yourself. Don't do it too much. What I see a lot is somebody is a grief coach or a weight loss coach or a book coach or a launch coach for six months or a year, and then there's suddenly another kind of coach. And then you wait another six months or a year, and there's suddenly another coach because they are not giving their business enough time and they are not doing the work that really needs to be done to get that business taking root. Now, maybe that they need more skills, more coaching skills or maybe their market is changing and they aren't changing with it, or maybe, because this is what I specialize in, maybe they have an inner block <laughs> with their relationship with money or success or visibility that they carry with them from niche to niche to niche. And so nothing works until the thing behind the thing, the self work is done. I didn't start making money because I got the right niche. I started making money because I changed my relationship with money before I found my right niche. So getting started, focus on what you love and who you love and how you help them. 
and who is in enough pain that they want to throw money at you for the help and the service you provide. And do the inner work, the deep inner work, more than anything, more than any perfect word you say, people hear who you are. They feel who you are. They see it. They smell it. <laughs> People can feel your energy. So whatever you have getting in the way between you and getting hired and paid and loved by your clients, you need to do that. And I would say that is 95% of the solution and the rest is commentary. And that is today's entire episode of Rich Witch Wednesday. I am, uh, oh, Andy, I was going to just say I'm not going to take any more questions, um, but I am. <laughs> I am. Andy wrote, how, how do you learn to coach well? First, go to a really, really good, well-established International Coach Federation certified coaching school where they test the bejesus out of you. I think I needed 100 hours of coaching, professional paid coaching, as the coach being paid under my belt before I even qualified to take the to take the live in-person examination on my coaching skills back in 2002. After I'd already been coaching for six, at least, yeah, for more than six years, I think, or was it eight years? I, I live outside of time and space and I lose track of dates and years sometimes. Um, I, I was just talking to another empathic friend who's the same way. Uh, and at the end of the day, I, I really believe in training and foundation. So I started with my coactive coaching certification, then coactive relationship coaching certification, then Ericksonian, Ericksonian hypnosis certification and neuro-linguistic programming certification. And I just kept adding things and adding things. Part of that was because I was insecure about charging. <laughs> and then once I changed my relationship with money and was getting hired and getting paid, I had all these great toys to help people with the widest myriad of challenges. Did I even use that myriad? Oh, well. Um, finally, really, really, the best way to get good at coaching is to coach. Your clients teach you more than any class or book or theory in the world because you have a person you love who's in pain in front of you. And your job is to help. Not to rescue, but to help restore your client to her truest essential wisdom, resourcefulness, centeredness, whatever it is to get the results and the happiness that she or he is really here for on earth. So, and you learn that by getting clients who throw you for loops, the exciting, and challenging thing about my niche that I've been doing since 2003, this money thing, is that clients bring challenges that never, ever, ever would have occurred to me in a million years. And I feel like any challenge that could arise has arisen, and if it hasn't arisen, it will. The client who didn't speak English, the client whose money honey was a werewolf, the client whose trauma was so terrible, she couldn't speak it. And all of that was okay. And all of it, we had successful outcomes anyway. And there will always be more. You want to go and get training first, I believe, to give you a foundational skill set to build on so that you have really baby basic skills to draw on when you don't have an answer because at the end of the day, you really shouldn't have an answer. You should be able to guide your client to find the answer. And as you do it more and more and more and more over the years, you start to know things. You start to recognize patterns before your client even speaks it. You start to become, I believe, nothing like coaching to make you psychic. I can hear what my client is going to say before she says it. I often smell it, see it, hear it, feel it before the client says it. 
<laughs> and then if the client says something differently, I, different, I can just say, oh, really? And then the, more often than not, the client will say, well, actually, and we'll circle back to what I heard or I thought or smelled or whatever. By the way, if I'm wrong, I couldn't care less. You know, I'm not in coaching to prove myself right. Any coach who is in coaching to prove herself right, fire her, him, whatever. Just that's not coaching. That's just bad news. <laughs> uh, so that's my answer to how do you learn to coach? Well, start with training as your safety net, and then you will just get better. Trust intuition and trust your client. I think 99% of the success of a coaching relationship is just believing in the person in front of you. Uh, I think that a really big part of why what I do with money is so healing is I may be the first and only person in that person's life to listen to his or her traumatic story and validate the experience. It doesn't matter to me whether it's factually factually true or not. That's not my business. What is my business is the experience is true and we are going to use it. But people need to be seen and heard and understood like we need oxygen. And that is, I think, one of the greatest gifts of coaching, healing, any therapeutic model, including law. My father was a lawyer. 99% of being a lawyer was being a therapist <laughs> for his clients was what he would tell me. So we are at the half hour mark. I'm going to end us again. For those of you who are new to my work and you want to learn how to tr change your relationship with money from a monster to a honey, go to MorganaRay.com and just opt in for the free four-part video series. Uh, easy peasy. You can opt out anytime you choose. Um, let's see if there's any other news. Oh, oh, and... If you don't know about this because you're listening on iTunes or you're listening to a replay or you're new to me or any of this, I highly encourage you to go over to my Facebook group uh, at facebook.com forward slash group or groups forward slash Morgana. Really, really, really easy. Uh, just, you know, look for it. I think right now we're calling it the secrets of financial alchemy. Uh, just look for my Facebook group, the, and uh, it's set to private, so anything that's shared is not public, and just request to join. You can It's public enough to find, but not public enough to read what people share there, and you will find a like-minded community. It's a support group. There are, I think, at least two study groups who are going through my financial alchemy 12 months of magic and manifestation international best-selling book together because it's it's not just a book it's an interactive workbook so study groups for free are forming together finding like-minded people there so lots of support there so more go to morganaray.com for the free four part video series and hundreds of videos and articles in the blog and uh, also free gifts when you buy my book and for support to ask questions that I can answer here uh, and to join a free study group there, go to my, my group on Facebook currently called Secrets of Financial Alchemy. And that completes today's Rich Witch Wednesday, and I will see you next week at 10 a.m. Pacific time uh, at my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Morgana page. Namaste.